What's going on guys? Welcome back to season 8 of my 24 Salt Lake City Dragons expansion mode series. Apologies for the wait on this final episode guys, but if you somehow missed it, I was hacked a few days ago. I put out some tweets, posted on Instagram. Luckily, I've got the channel back now. So that along with the trade deadlines is the reason for the wait. If you guys missed all the trade some videos I did, check those out. Also, if you guys might have unsubscribed when my channel got hacked, please resubscribe. I lost like 500 subscribers, so I'd really appreciate, you know, anything you do to help out. As always, appreciate all your guys' support. If you could also leave a thumbs up on this video, it'd really help me out getting back to the uh, old sub count. So, looking at the team here, guys, we're currently 5-1-1 one one the preseason. Dreamer there, the new captain, over a point per game. We are still looking for our first Stanley Cup. Last year was actually the Carolina Hurricanes, I believe winning their second of this franchise, but I could be wrong about that. So, I'll show you guys what the team is looking like. We made a couple of big freight signings, and I think the team is probably the most stacked it's ever been. So, First line there, you got Dreboos 89, still 25 elite potential, kicked up to a 90, playing with Cousins there, our new first line center, and Rantanen, down to a 92, but he should still perform, he's got a plus 5 chem boost, Cousins as well we got from Buffalo, um, as a free agent, you can see he's performed pretty well so far, hopefully he does the same with us, Chinakov on the second line there, Stan Coven and Kairou, the third line we got Kako, Hedstrom, and Lafreniere back on the team, so uh, Lafreniere, Kako reunited, Hedstrom here of course, was our rookie last season, 43 points, is very good all-around player, good skater. Fourth line, I think, solid. McGrordy, Lund, and Delandria. Look at the defense. You got Byram, Glebov on the top pair. Levshina, Renski on the second. Favreau, Thompson on the bottom. Decided to kind of make the top four more balanced this way. Hopefully, it helps us out. goaltending wise Knight, of course, is our starter. He's been great for us, honestly. Ball, they're backing up. It's an amazing backup, 85 overall. You look at the first power play here. It's a plus four, but basically our best players. Power play two actually gets a plus five. It looks solid. And then as usual, the four mans there don't look too bad. In terms of the PK, we actually look a lot better now. Again, Hedstrom does everything you can see. Good defensively, strong skater. And then Kako here is probably our best defensive player. 96 D awareness. That is just unreal. Uh, I think the D pairs are actually the exact same in terms of 5 on 5 and the penalty kill. So uh, you guys can see the rest of the penalty kill units. I think the only ones we actually get negative on are the two uh, three mans there, which... You know, we're barely ever using, so not the end of the world. Also, you guys, I almost forgot, but one thing I found kind of funny is the fact that two of the defensemen on our team actually got moved at the deadline. Bowen Byram, of course, I think, shocked a lot of people getting traded for middle stat, and then Jack Thompson actually involved in a smaller deal for Anthony Duclair. Now, in terms of the AHL team, they already won one Calder Cup, trying to win another. We got Preston there, first line center, A2 overall. Might be traded at the deadline, same with Martone. Uh, they can help us bring in, you know, a difference maker. Don't have the most cap space, but, you know, probably just make something work defensively as well. They're looking pretty good. In goal, they got Saren inserting his 83. Meyer there, 81, backing up some immediately potential. So he's another guy that could move at this deadline. Again, trying to just give us that little extra push towards the Stanley Cup. So before we get started here, guys, as always, I'll share our ratings. I'm pretty sure this is like the highest rated team we've had yet in terms of like every single attribute. So we got 100 offense, 94 defense, 89 goaltending. Let's get started. All right, guys, so it's now the end of December. We got a record here, 23, 12, and two, which I think is good. Yeah, for first in the division, 48 points. So can't complain, AHL team, first in their division, 55. They're 26, eight, and three, crushing it. Uh, Ufko there, the defenseman actually, 45 points, 37 games, very impressive. In terms of the NHL team, Cousins are leading scorer. So looking like that signing was good so far. And now guys, we're at the deadline with a record of 40, 19, and three, continuing to play really well. First place in the division there with 83 points. The Oilers love 93, so they're definitely the team to beat right now in the NHL. AHL-wise, 40, 14, and 8, 88 points. They continue to just be so dominant. Gavin Brindley's got 70 and 62. Love that. NHL team, it's actually ranching now, lean score, over point per game. As I mentioned, even though he's 92 overall, he's still going to produce. Just had a bit of a down year last season. And definitely, we're buyers here in the final year. So let's see what's out there. I don't want to like mess with the team too much, but if we can bring somebody in that you know really give us a boost, this end green guy, 90 overall, like, we're trying to find players. Bottinger's a 90. Oh, he's a goalie. I was like, why is his value so much lower? Uh, McTavish there, Sergeyev, Owen Power, Shabbat, Bullduck, Morrissey, Mintikov, uh, Nikishin. I mean, Morrissey, one year left, 6.5. Could come in for Jack Thompson, or actually, I could honestly probably have him on the top pair. I feel like, you know, our defense could use a bit of a bolster. Forward group-wise, we're probably fine. So we'll take a look at Morrissey. He seems to be the guy to get. Um, at least, you know, for our first trade, you never know. Could make multiple here. So take a look at goaltender just to make sure Knight is doing well. And 903. Not amazing, but it's decent. Ball there, 922. So he's actually doing really well as the backup. And the next time, just take a look at the defenseman. Seeing how the plus minus is. So the top four looks good. The bottom pair even isn't that terrible. Jack Thompson's a plus one. Again, he's only an 80. So we definitely, you know, could upgrade him. Could even move Favreau if it helps us make this trade happen. Are you kidding me, guys? The trade deadline just started. I was trying to make a trade for Morrissey, and assets already no longer on the team. Somebody sniped them that fast. 
That's crazy. And now this is kind of funny, guys. Looking at all the teams, and Thomas Hurdle here is on the block with the San Jose Sharks. Of course, uh, was just traded in real life for the, to the Vegas Golden Knights. Tampa Bay here has Sergeyev. I saw Buffalo as Owen Power. I think one of these two guys is probably the move for us. All right, guys. Now I'm trying to get Sergeyev. I see we have to take a goalie back, so probably just go Husso there on the block has like no value. Unfortunately, we'd be over the league maximum salary cap, even with 50% retention, sending over Fabro. So uh, can't make the trade happen with Tampa Bay, but luckily. Um, I already looked. Somehow, Owen Power, like, it's actually so close to going through. Power, they're making 8.35. Retain 50% on him, which is, I think, 75k savings, because he's only making 150k less. Um, the trade will actually work. The thing is, Tampa Bay was actually interested in everything I was sending over. Uh, you guys want to saw first round pick. Uh, Meyer there, the main league goalie. Preston, saw in the AHL, Fabro, but could try this trade with Buffalo. Don't have to add a goalie if we do this. You can see we're literally, like, just under the salary cap max. So, uh, see what the Sabres say. Rejected. Okay, I mean, pretty fair offer. Again, a first meme league goalie, our best prospect. We could also just add like a second round pick. Let's try the Penguins one, bet on ourselves. Trade still rejected. I mean, at this point, we're going for it, right? We haven't won a cup yet. Do we give two first round picks? Meyer, Preston, Fabro, for one power. Trades accepted. All right, so massive deal. We still do have some prospects, some mid round picks. We don't have any cap space though, so it literally have to be like somebody that's somehow good enough to make our team while still being on like an entry-level deal. All right, guys, so since this is the last season, I'm trying to make one more big trade here to get Zachary Bolduck of the St. Louis Blues. 8-8 overall, two-way forwards, got good defensive stats, good offensive, very good skater. Physical even is actually better than I expect. For training 50%, so he's only going to cost 1.6 million. We actually save a million bucks training over Delandria. Um, 84 overall, two-way forward. We got Justin Poirier, Schultz, Pittsburgh second-round pick. You know what I'm just realizing? Because we're saving a million, rather than training Delandria, we could probably do this and train over McGrory, who's one overall lower. Um, I think production-wise, about the same. So try that. Yeah, the trade does work. Schultz there's mainly goalie we just drafted recently. Pittsburgh second round pick. Let's see what the Blues say. Trades rejected. I feel like it's got to be close. Again, it's the last season, so we're trying to go for it. We are running out of time. It took me a while to find, you know, something we could do. Two seconds. Trade is still rejected. I could try throwing in Porter Martone there instead of a second. They're still saying no. So I'm um, probably not going to get Bulldog here. I don't really want to trade, you know, we could easily trade like a first round pick three years in the future, but I want to keep it to like the next two years to keep it more realistic. Although Vegas apparently <laughs> trades all their future first. So trade deadline is now complete, guys. I think the trade we did make bringing in uh, Owen Power should, you know, be a pretty big upgrade for us. And it looks like the Buffalo Sabres actually flipped Dante Fabro uh, to the Avalanche after getting him from us. So we might see him in the playoffs. Let's see Mikey Anderson to the Penguins, John Reno to the Canucks. Anything else? Jacob Perot to the Blackhawks. You got Zach Dean to the Blackhawks as well. Our trade for Owen Power. Lucas Reichel there to the Stars. Thomas Novak to the Devils. Offman to the Capitals. Bernard Dock to the Canucks. Saros to the Sharks. I'm interested to see what his rating would still be. Thomas Hurdle to the Kings. He does get moved. How uh, fitting is that? William Nealander to the LA Kings as well. That's a big time trade. Okay. Um, Gabe Velarde to the Predators. Keep looking here. Morrissey was the guy who got. Morrissey got traded to the Capitals. Again, they did that like within the first 30 minutes of the deadline. <laughs> I can't believe like I had no chance. I think Matthew Nyes I saw got moved as well. Uh, right there is the trade for Matthew Nyes. Of course, higher rated. Two seconds in spends. Uh, you also got Morrissey there with the Washington Capitals. They'll probably show the Nylander trade going to the Kings. So it looks like the Leafs are selling. And wow, like the trade alerts just keep coming in for blockbuster deals. So um, Sean Monaghan, let me take a look. 81 overall, playmaker. Uh, defensive awareness, physical, aren't the best, but if we could add him to the AHL team for free, make up for trading away Preston, I feel like might as well. All right, guys, so after the trade deadline, here's an updated look at the team. I think the four groups still the same. Like, we're getting really good chemistry. They've been playing pretty well. Defensively, though, we got Rensky and Byram now on the top pair, so our two best guys. Powers on the second with Glavov getting a plus four. We then have Levshinov on the bottom pair, so this the amount of depth we have on defense now is incredible. Uh, in terms of the power play, I think it's more or less the same. I want to switch up, like, the distributor, the finisher, but apart from that, I believe it's, you know, the same guys. PK-wise, though, we actually get a plus five now in the first unit with power added to it. So that is huge. Hopefully that PK can really, you know, shut down the other teams. I think three-man-wise, we got plus two now on the first, but uh, still minus two on the next two. And then in terms of the AHL team, it's mostly the same. But Monahan, of course, coming in to be our first line center. 36 now, maybe can help, you know, lead that AHL team to a Calder Cup. They've been playing pretty well. And I think they only lost, like, one player, so they should be fine. Also, too, I was looking at it, I think the reason why Ofco is doing so well, he's 80 overall in the AHL, which is pretty solid. Again, plus four cam. You can see 69 points, solid offensive stats. Not even insane, though, but I think 
playing with Bowman here is very good defensively. It's just like the perfect pairing. So hopefully those guys continue to crush it. All right, guys. So it's at the end of the final season. We have a record here of 49, 29, and 4. One win shy there at 50. Still, though, 102 points. A solid season. First place in the division. The Oilers are just too good. 119. Even the Hurricanes... 114 Canadians 110 we got some juggernauts to compete with AHL team first place in their division and conference 57 15 and 10 124 points and actually won the AHL in their final season uh, you can see Gavin Brindley popped off 104 points that is awesome maybe they can win one more Calder Cup here Ranton leading scorer 76 82 isn't bad you'd like to have at least one guy you know put up a point per game I think he might even slow down there after the deadline but the team overall I think did about the same Cousins 73, Cairo 68, the minus nine is not ideal. Uh, Dreber there, Byram, Lafreniere, Chinikov, Stan Coven had less than 50 points. So that's the second line. I should probably go in and switch that up for the playoffs because clearly that second line's not working. I um, should mention too, Byram had 62 points, so quite solid from him. Wrensky 36, you'd like to see a bit more when he's getting second power play time, first unit, but uh, overall not terrible. Owen Power, let's see, we brought him in here and he had six points, was a plus three. I'd like to see Owen Power produce more than that, but like at the end of the day, it's not crazy bad. Jack Thompson there was a minus seven, so he actually got worse after the Ted line with a better D partner in Levchinov. Spencer Knight, 906 is solid. Ball there at 917. Very good for a backup. HLY Saren in here at 912. Take a look there behind Brindley. Off go 95 points as a D-man. Incredible. We got like, you know, the Kale McCarr of the AHL. Lombardi was over point per game there. Lutz was close. Mark Tone at 62, 36 goals. Hondik at 60, so yeah. AHL team is looking sick. And I'm turning the entire league here, guys. You got Dreisel McDavid leading the way. It kind of makes sense when the Oilers are winning the President's Trophy. Alex Zetterberg had 110. He must be on that top line. Now an 89 overall. It was a late first round pick for them. What a pick. Jeez. So the entire Oilers first line is literally one, two, three. Gavin McKenna here, 109 points with the Canadians. Uh, I saw some people on Reddit saying it doesn't really perform for them. Well, Gavin McKenna here is popping off from Montreal. I think it has to do with his shoot pass attribute. You got Cole Coughlin as well with 105. Quinn Hughes, 103. I forgot the <laughs> Oilers have him too. The Oilers are just too good. Robertson, Wyatt Johnson, 97. That is six. Matthews there at 96. 62 goals is good enough for Misha Shard. And actually, Nathan McKinnon was tied with him. So I think they just share it, right? Um, Misha Shard trophy. There's a tie in goals. Quinn Hughes, again, leads all defensemen in points. He also plus 53. So I believe he'll be winning another Norris trophy. Most of the usual suspects here at the top. Um, in terms of the goaltending now, Jacob Fowler, 41 wins, tied with Kochikov. Now, in terms of save percentage for a starter, it's actually going to be a scare off. 62 games played with the Penguins, had a 9 1 6. And then goals against here looks to be Mackenzie Blackwood, 53 games played at 2 6 8. That's with the Oilers. Only 81, the Rocket Hill as the starter, and they had what, 130 points? This proves you do not need a lead goalie in this game. I've, I've said it so many times, and people still disagree with me, even though I feel like, you know, the, the proof's in the pudding, as they say. Rookie scoring leader here, Philip Von Fersen, 48. Tied with Stenberg, way more goals though, and like one better plus minus. He should get it. If they give it to this like maple top guy, be kind of dumb, I think. And on terms of the entire league here, guys, as I mentioned, Oilers there win the President's Trophy 119. We finished fifth in the NHL with 102. So can't be upset with the regular season performance. Pop 15 make it in, then Ottawa actually gets a spot above Chicago. Last place in the league this final year is the LA King, 69 points. Not nice. Oilers there, most goals four. We're actually not the top, we're not the bottom, so we're in the middle. Goals against, the Hurricanes had the best. Uh, looks like we were like seventh best or something in the league. So not terrible. As I mentioned, I think really all that we gotta do here is make a change to that second line. Aside from Jack Thompson, who was like our worst defenseman, those are the only three guys on the team uh, who had negative plus minus. So, I mean, could we just simply do something like Lafreniere and Kako? Oh my gosh, plus five. Do we have this all the time? I somehow didn't see that like as an option. Maybe uh, the X factor slightly changed, but okay, yeah, let's try this. Kako, Stankov, and Lafreniere. Then we got Chinikov, uh, Hedstrom, and Kairu. We get plus five in the entire top six. If that was available since the beginning, then I definitely messed up in not finding it. But hopefully that will give us a little boost here in the playoffs. So first round matchup, we're going to have one of the two wild cards after winning the Central Division. So we got the National Predators here in round one. We traded Scarab to Pittsburgh, and they just traded Saros as well. So who is going to be their starting goalie? That's a question. Victor Eklund's on their team. They got Svechkov, first line center. Dimitri Kos, uh, Joachim Kamel there. Forsberg's still on the team, but he's down to 84. They got Nick Schmaltz, Alex Tuck, Sean Couture, fourth line center's not bad. Cam York's up to a 91, tons of X Factors. Defense, they got Hitty overall, Devin Taze. They got this Eric Two guy, all right, ace on overall. So they still have a solid goalie. Overall, I think their team's actually not that bad. And obviously in the playoffs, anything can happen. All right, guys, so here we go. First round of the playoffs, have to get by the Predators here. I'm trying to get our first Stanley Cup. We can't even make it out of round one. Would be kind of embarrassing. 
First two games are at home. 6-3 win, 5-4 win. Let's go. Head to Smashville now. 2-1 OT loss. 1-0 OT win. So close games there, luckily. Uh, we're 3-1 series lead. Just have to win one of these next three. And there we go. 4-1 series win against the Predators. Moving on to round two. Potentially facing a pretty good team here. I see both the Oilers and the Golden Knights swept. And we got the Arizona Coyotes. I'm actually pretty happy with that. The Oilers and the Golden Knights are playing each other. Uh, Lafreniere there has a point per game. Now looking at the Coyotes lineup, they got Keller still on the team with Cooley and this uh, Riley Boychuk guy. Gunther, Josh Doan, Fedotov. They got Connor Geeky, third line center. So I mean, pretty good forward group. Almost as good as ours. Defensively, they got Sider. I think he was a free agent. They signed him. Simashev, Lamaru. So I mean, defensively, they're good. Not as good as us. But again, they're solid. 84 starters. So they're kind of like a slightly worse version of us. Like, they got a lot of depth, but we have higher-end talent and a little bit more depth, but uh, still not a team to take lightly. Let's see what happens here. Round number two, first games again at home in Salt Lake. We get a 5-2 win, 3-2 OT win. Head to Arizona now, which, I mean, are they even still playing Arizona at this point? 4-2 loss and 4-1 win. Let's go. So again, 3-1 series lead, game five back at home, and we clutch up. Let's go. 8-2 so far in these playoffs, and we got the Edmonton Oilers in the conference final. This is the team I was worried about. I was hoping someone else would take them out for us. But I mean, if we can beat them, we can beat anybody. Lafreniere now has 12 and 10. So we'll take a look at that Oilers team. I think we know the first line, McDavid, Drysaddle, Zetterberg. It's going to be tough to contend with, but I feel like I believe in our guys. So yeah, first line, absolutely nasty. McDavid still on 97 at 34 years old. In the playoffs, he's got 14 points right now. They got Bobby Brink on the team up from 88. That's actually one of the highest I've ever seen him grow. Playing with Jack McBain, who got to an 87. How did Jack McBain get to an 87? What the heck? He just had a 55-point year with Boston and just kept it up. I mean, good for him. Heinemann even 88. That's one of the highest I've ever seen him grow. Uh, Hiddles on that third line with Xavier Bargo. So they look pretty solid defensively. Again, they got Quinn Hughes. They brought in Anderson and they still have Bouchard. Then after that, it's pretty weak. But I mean, when you have like those three guys, you're fine. Kind of like ours, but Quinn Hughes is definitely the best of all of them. Then got Andronov here in Nevis 86, currently averaging a 9.15 save percentage. So... Yeah, this is going to be a tough contest for sure. Um, if we lose to this insane Oilers team, it won't be the end of the world. I know obviously like to win a Stanley Cup with this team, but uh, I feel like, you know, we still had a lot of success. I'm already being defeatist. I shouldn't do that. We should be optimistic here. So game one in Edmonton. Let's see what happens here, guys. First period. And they're up 1-0. Philip Hiddle. 2-2 two two now. We answer back. Valimaki actually made 2 nothing. Dreber Stan Coven tied it up. And wow, 5-2. to two. Kairu Kako and then Dreber there with the empty netter. What a comeback on this team. What a statement game one. We're not going to be pushed over by these Oilers. Let's go. Game two now, guys, of course, still in Edmonton. Period one, 1-1. One, one. Kairu and Bouchard, second period, still 1-1. One, one. And we're getting absolutely destroyed in the shot department. 34-13. 2-2, to though. It doesn't matter. McDavid actually had to tie the game. We're going to OT now. And the Oilers win in OT. I mean, they deserve that game. 47 shots to 23. Spencer Knight was doing everything he could. Unfortunately, uh, the guys just really couldn't find the back of the net on their limited shots. So um, here we go, guys. A third game. We're now headed home to Salt Lake. If we can win at least one of these and have a 2-2 series after four, I'll be happy. 3-1 lead early. Wrenski, Stankoven, Hedstrom, Zetterberg for them. 6-2. We got, you know, Cousins, McGordy, Owen Power, Heineman. So the old Buffalo guys are playing well for us. And we hold on there. 6-2. Again, Oilers do outshoot us, but our guys just have better, I guess, on the lesser shots. So... That's another big win here. Game four at home. If we can win this one, that'd be the third straight series. We're up three to one. Let's see what happens. Here we go. First period, we're down one early. McBain, again, I can't believe how good he got. Second period, not looking good. Down three, nothing, but a whole period to go. And four to one loss. Cousins for us, Anderson for them. So I said I'd be happy with 2-2, and I still am. We got three games left. It's the best of three. We do have to win at least one game guaranteed away. But we already did that in the first game, so no reason why we can't do it again. Here we go, guys. Game five. This is pivotal. And we're up 1-0. Dylan Cousins, let's go. 3-1 now. Kairou, Glubov, Bouchard for them on the power play. And we hold on 6-3. Cousins again. Shinikov with a couple late goals just to make sure we hold on. That is huge. So all we have to do now is win one of the next two games. And we're moving on to the Stanley Cup final for the first time. I think this is actually our first time in the conference final since it was at year two or year three we played the Calgary Flames. So game six, guys, at home. The fans are going to be buzzing. Let's see what happens. And we're up 2 to 1. Let's go. McDavid actually got the first goal. And then Lafreniere, Dreber answered back. 3 to 2 now. Headstrom for us. Hyman for them. I'm just going to send the period to see what happens. No way. 3 3 OT. Please. 
Let's go. Miko Rantanen, our best player. That's why you pay him the big bucks. Wins the OT winner. He's the hero. Brings us to the Stanley Cup final for the first time in franchise history. We took out the best team in the NHL to do it. And we've got the Ottawa Senators here up next. So very curious to see what the Sens team looking like. Jordan Kyrie there, point per game, playing third line. So clearly uh, that switch made sense. Maybe should have done that earlier on in the year. We could have hit the 50 win mark, but obviously all I care about is the Stanley Cup. So take a look here at the Sens. You got Kachuk, Stutzla, Batherson on that first line. So all these guys have not left. Shane Pinto's still there. They brought in Quentin Byfield, which is a big signing. Obviously, we're looking at him too. And they're actually going to pair it up with his old teammate in Kaliev. Tyler Boucher's on the team. Nemich, Marchman's there. Fabry, Newhook, LeBanc. Defensively, they got Sanderson still. Heronic signed. Struble, Chikrin still there. Yakmachuk. I'm not sure how to say this guy's name, no lie. And they're starting goalie here, guys. A Sogard, 86 overall, 6 7. He's got a 9 1 6 so far in the playoffs. All right, so we're running into a bit of a hot goalie. Before we start this, I actually should take a look and see how Knight's doing, just because I'm curious. He's got a 9-1-3. Oh my god. I said Sogar is a hot goalie. Spencer Knight's carrying right now. I mean, he's probably looking like the con my favorite, because for our best guys, a point per game in Cairo, I think definitely you're giving it to the goalie. So here we go, guys. Game one, Stanley Cup final. In Salt Lake, we got the home ice advantage. That's awesome. We're currently 12-4. They're 12-7. Here we go. Do or die. We got to win this series. This team needs a Stanley Cup for their legacy. And we're up 4-1 to one in the first period. Kaka with two. What a signing. Ranton and Kairou. They actually got the first goal of the game. 5-3. Uh, to three. Okay, it's getting a little bit too close for comfort. And 8-5. to five. Oh my gosh. So this would have been the sixth goal. And then it was 6-5. to five. And luckily, uh, we got a couple more hedged from their empty netter. What a first game of the, of the Stanley Cup final. Uh, the boys were buzzing. A lot of scoring. I mean, we take that though. Anytime we can get a win, uh, definitely we're not going to complain. So... Second game here, still in Salt Lake. We can go up 2-0, head to Ottawa. That'd be amazing. And we're up one here. Granted, he's been great for us these playoffs. 3-2. Kachuk gets a couple. Kako and Lafreniere, the two former Rangers. Plus, Kako actually got a shorty. And 5-2, we hold on. Renski and then McGrody there with the empty netter. Okay, I don't want to get too optimistic, but we're up 2-0 on this series. Game 3 now, heading to Ottawa. Come on, keep it going. 1-1 one, one here. Dreamer for us. Kachuk for them. Kachuk's been playing great. Not a good second period. 5-3. to three. Uh, They got four goals there. Byron and Chinikov for us. You never know, though. 8-4. to four. All right. So, yeah, they just absolutely killed us that game. Uh, they did not want to get swept. Respect. Hopefully, we can at least win one here in Ottawa. I think, you know, 3-1. A much more comfortable position, obviously, to be in than 2-2. Two, two. So, here we go, guys. Hopefully, the boys can bounce back. And 0-0 after 1. 2-0 after 2. Lafreniere, Jack Thompson actually gets one. Let's go. And 4-1 to one we hold on. Kachuk gets their lone goal. Glebov and Stan Coven. So a couple more, you know, defensive defensemen actually pitching in. You love seeing that. So all we have to do now, guys, is win one of these next three games. I mean, are you kidding me? Please, please, please find a way. <laughs> I mean, come on. Game 5. We're back at home. And it's 0-0. And it's 2-0. Let's go. London, Hedstrom. Uh, so the bottom six, we'll just resume simulation. Sanders there on the power play. Brady Kachuk refuses to get shut out. Two to one, route shooting them about 28 to 17. Approaching the halfway point of the period. Yakima Chuck there ties the game. Two to two, still out shooting them. We got a power play. Our team's nasty on the power play. Doesn't seem to matter. Three and a half minutes left. Two and a half, one and a half. Okay. Okay, this is what you play for, guys. Going to OT. Wow. All right, Stanley Cup potentially on the line. I'm going to make sure here I take control of the coach. Um, I think we'll rock. Do we rock the homes? Do we rock the alternates? You know, let's rock the homes. Let's rock the regular for the Stanley Cup final. You can see the Sens there. They're guys with the X Factors. I mean, they got a lot of top end talent. Like I said, though, I like our depth better. I'll take a look here and see to how the ratings match up. So, of course, we got 196, 89. They got 97, 92, 88. So, we're better in every single category. Three plus better, except for goalie, we're only one plus better. But here you go. This is what you play for. Overtime, Stanley Cup final, game five. Chance to win the cup. Right back to Byram. Elite edges. Let's see it. Oh, wow. They picked that off. And this isn't good. Nice poke there from Morensky. And Kachuk comes in. Huge hit. Uh, I think that was Byram. Faceoffs is in our zone. We got to win this one. Get it out. And then try and make something happen. No way. Kachuk, nice defense from Byron. That's how he got those big time defensemen. Rensky there. The stick him up zone ability is huge. Ranton into Dreber. Man, if he skated a bit, he could have been behind the defenseman. Find a way. He's just going to take it. Cousins 
Not the greatest shot. There's a rebound. And Orensky throws it on net. Kind of a muffin, to be honest. A little backhand there. Sogard's not letting that in. Byram to Orensky. They're moving the puck well. Come on. Come on, Byram. Shifting. Lafreniere. Nice block, Orensky. Another nice save. Oh, no. <laughs> and we're on the PK. Clear trip there. And Lafreniere's in the box. Hedstrom. The young kid on the PK. Let's see what he does. Power with a terrible dump. I think that's more on the game mechanics than actually him. Uh, we're all over them here, though. On the PK. Nemich on it now. A little bit of a 2-on-2. Two -two. Nice stop there from, uh, I think that was Gustav. Nice block from Power. Loses the puck. They pass it back, though. Batherson tries to go short side. No room. Knight had that post covered. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I don't know who that was. We just fanned on it. That probably would have been a goal. Kako, another very strange dump. Marchman is kind of all alone, but kind of not. Nice save there from Knight. Um, it looks like Power was coming back. Big hit. Boucher, another nice save. Wow. Huge rebound chance. Get up. Get up. They got the full pressure. Don't do this to me, Knight. Oh, my gosh. They're going to cycle now. They're literally playing like a hot player would. Passing the puck pretty good. Nice poke there from Hedstrom. Intercepts it. And can't dump it because, guys, oh, the dumping is so weird in this game. Nice hit. And another nice hit. Oh, my gosh. Our team is just standing these guys up. Power there. Huge one. And we got 40 seconds still on this PK. How? Three-minute period. This PK seems like it's 10 minutes long. Huge save from Knight. Are you kidding me? On his butt. Get the blocker. Out front. And Power's going to grab it. They are all over us right now. There we go. Glow up. Dump the puck. You know what? That works too. Just get it out of our zone. Make them have to regroup. Stutzla coming with Byfield. 10 seconds left here on the PK. What a PK this has been. And that was very dangerous. Luckily, no one was in the middle. Delandria here with some energy. Five seconds. Just dumps it. We're going to have Lafreniere coming out of the box now. Full pressure should be gone. What a kill. That's the kind of kill that wins you a Stanley Cup. Let's see if they can now, you know, use that kill for their momentum. Nice interception from Cousins. Find him. Dreber's wide open. The captain. Pass it to Lafreniere. Are you kidding me? Imagine. That was the game winner. Or the Stanley Cup winner, I should say. Byron walks in. Sogard, nice save. Stan Coben's on it. Look at him just skating around the ice. He's too agile. Branson in. Man, I thought he might have sniped it low side. But I think that just missed. Branson is out front. And a huge poke from Sogard. The two goalies are playing really well here in game five. Sanderson's coming down. Nice hit. Our defensemen have just been stepping up at the right moment every single time. Laying these dudes out. Dreber now. Ooh, nice play to Ranch and give it back to him. <laughs> he just wants the shot. I feel like the pass is wide open. Wierenski from the point. Not a great shot. Fabry has it, luckily. Our guys are faster, but new hook. Oh my gosh, we have four guys chasing. Please. Luckily, he goes short side. Knight's got that post covered all day. We've got 30 seconds left. As I say that, Kaylee have in behind the defenseman. What a save. Spencer Knight on the breakaway. Are you kidding me? That could have been it. 16 seconds. Lund here, so the fourth line's out. Oh my gosh, they got their second out there. They're playing well. Nice save again from Knight. He's just been unreal. Seven seconds. He'll probably just, you know, wait for the period to end. But they're trying to do something. Delandria, two seconds left. Throw the puck on net. <laughs> that was never going to go in. What a save. That was the one there, Knight. On his butt with the blocker. Are you kidding me? I mean, Sogard had some nice ones too. But we're heading to the second OT now. We're out shooting them. Time to attack there. We got a little bit of an edge, but it's, you know, pretty similar. I mean, <laughs> wow, this is nerve-wracking. Hopefully our team... Finds a way. I gotta say too, guys, I really like that center ice looking like the dragon scales. You got the two dragons looking at each other. I know I made it, but I think it looks sick. Where Renski, oh my gosh. Nice shot. Huge rebound. Are you kidding me? It's that easy. Ranging to Cousins. Puts in the back of the net. So good laying on his back. You can't believe it. And in the final season, the Salt Lake City Dragons are Stanley Cup champions. I was worried it wasn't gonna happen, especially we got matched up with the Oilers in the conference final. But this team would not be denied. They are just too stacked. And they absolutely clutched up here in the final year. I mean, we never went to seven games, I don't believe, in any playoff series. So that is insane. Beating this Ottawa Senators team was definitely a tough team. Jordan Cairo gets the con Smythe. I got to say, he had 20 points. I think Spencer Knight deserved it. He had 9.3 save percentage. He was unreal for us in this game, at least what I saw from him in the OT. But uh, Cairo, of course, was a good player for us there as well. And now, guys, of course, Dreber going to come and get the Stanley Cup for us. I actually have no idea what he looks like. I'm always curious to see uh, what they come up with, some, with the creative players. Sometimes the guy will be, like, white hair at age 20. 
Uh, Dreamer here, let's see. He's got a sick stash. I mean, I actually respect- I love the stash he's got on him, so there we go. Uh, Captain Stash, 68, Dreamer, our first ever pick. Love seeing that. Him lifting the Stanley Cup. The Rock and the, uh, the blue and purple jerseys there. I think the only blue and purple team in the NHL. So, it took us eight years, but I'm glad we were able to actually, you know, make this happen. And, of course, now he's looking for that first guy to get the Cup, too. Who's been on the team for a while? I mean, Lafreniere, of course, was from the expansion draft. We lost him. We brought him back. He'll be getting it here. I think Spencer Knight's also going to get it. And then probably Ranston. He was our, you know, big time for agent signing. I feel like we never signed him. We're probably never lifting the Stanley Cup. So, uh, huge to, you know, have Lafreniere back on the team. I know a lot of people didn't like that trade. Probably, you know, shouldn't have happened. I was trying to shake the team up too much. Let's go with Spencer Knight next. He was also from the expansion draft. And again, in that OT, so many chances they had to, like, win the game. He just came up huge. I love the beard they have him uh, rocking there. But, yeah, Spencer Knight, big-time goalie for us. The fact we literally had him as our starting goalie, I think, the entire franchise, basically. Um, I think, you know, as soon as the second season, at least, he was our guy, put up great numbers. Usually doesn't happen in franchise. Usually goalies are really, you know, up and down. But he was consistent the entire time back there. And then finally, I mean, Jordan Kyrie won the Conn Smythe. But Mika Ranton, I think, overall... Uh, in this franchise with a better player for us. Usually our lean scorer. Veteran on this team is going to be like, what, 35 or something now. So, love seeing him lift that cup with us. Obviously, he's already done it once with the Avs, but, but now he's doing it here with the Salt Lake City Dragons. So, so happy, guys. I was worried, like, if we would have been a first-round exit or something dumb, I would have been so upset. The fact that we are actually able to go on such a deep run here and then, you know, finish it off with the Stanley Cup wins. Amazing. Again, our team so stacked top to bottom. Gave up a bunch of futures and everything, but realistic you know nothing outside the next two years literally more realistic than the real life vegas gold knight so i think no one could be too upset and there you have it guys stanley cup champions salt lake city dragons and right here you guys you can see all the names on the stanley cup of course captain there george dreber i didn't even realize that was his name and then of course all the other names what a team i still can't believe it guys salt lake city dragons they are stanley cup champs i totally forgot to check the ahl team i don't think they want to call their cup though because yeah springfield thunderbirds are your call their cup champs we'll take a quick look and see um, how they did though. I want to say they actually went and made the conference final and yeah We lost to Springfield there in the or unless was that the call their cup final? Syracuse round one Sanders round two. No, but yeah, we lost to uh, Springfield there in the conference final But that's still not bad off the HL team probably, you know Should have won the colored cup seeing as how dominant they were but that's all right uh, Continue simming here see the awards and all that ducks there jump from eight to one for the first overall pick But at the end of this we don't really care about that Lafreniere actually more points than Cairo so interesting. I got to take a look and see how everyone did in these playoffs. I really do think Spencer Knight got robbed of that con Smythe. So, I mean, Lafreniere had one more goal and one more point than Kairou. Wasn't as good plus minus. Kairou also never took a penalty, which is actually kind of nuts. So, I could see the voters maybe, you know, going towards him. Cousins there was close to a point per game. Byram at 18 as defenseman. Kanako, Stankoven, Ranch, and Chinikov all at 17. Hedstrom stepped up. Third line, 16 points. He's got a couple X factors now. Also, his potential is up to high elite. Obviously, we built this team, though, for this year, and that's about it, because we definitely be losing some guys uh, due to contracts. So, Spencer Knight, 9-2-2. It did drop a little bit, but, I mean, 2 6, six goals against. You guys let me know in the comments. Who would you have given the Conn Smythe to? Spencer Knight, Alexi Lafreniere, Jordan Cairo. Also, too, I think I just noticed Spencer Knight, five X-Factors now. Still an 86, but I think, you know, could jump up in rating. In terms of the playoff tree, obviously, we kind of know our road. Beat the Preds in five, Coyotes in five, Oilers in six, Thens in five. Like I said, never had to play a seventh game. Centers there, beat the Leafs in six, Capitals in seven, Blue Jackets in six, before falling to us in five. Now, next, you guys will take a look at the awards. Stanley Cup there, Salt Lake City Dragons. It looks good. Of course, we did win that one Presidents Trophy four years back. Our first, Clarence S. Campbell as well. Dreisel there got the R. Ross Trophy. I thought it was McDavid. Um, maybe I guess it was Dry Silent. David though got the heart. Maybe they were tied or something. Quinn Hughes, James Norris. It's just all Oilers. Uh, Petter Schoen there, Lady Bing. Maple Top there, the Kraken got the Calder. Which, of course, Kyra Khan Smythe. Kachikov got the Vesna along with Liam Jennings. You got Fritz there at the Ducks. Daniel Bill Masterton. Islanders coach Jack Adams. Leo Carlson with a Selkie. Another one for him. Ted Lindsay there goes to Dry Saddle. And then Marisha Shard is a tie there between Matthews and McKinnon. AHL awards here, of course, no Calder Cup, but we did win it like four years ago. We also won the regular season here, which might have been the first time we did this. I'm not sure if we did it before. Um, it's just, you know, been too long. So AHL had some regular season success. Gatlin Brindley, most points. I mean, he had 100 plus. He also got the MVP there. White Law, most goals. You got Flynn there, best rookie. Ufko, of course, best defenseman. I thought maybe even he would have gotten the MVP. Portillo, best goalie. Gavin Brindley also won sportsmanship, so he probably didn't have too many uh, penalties. Saren in there, lowest goals against. So both teams were able to win championships. AHL team had some really good regular season success at the end. 
I will take a look here at the coaching staff and just see kind of our head coach final record, all that stuff. So uh, staff chemistry was 75%, he was an A+, plus. everything but penalty kill, he was an A. Take a look, so final record for him, 376, 225, 55, with a 61 and a half win percentage, one Stanley Cup, one Presence Trophy, team fit there, only 59%, which is kind of funny, but I mean, obviously we got the cup, we did our job, we got it done, so I'm very happy. Finally here, guys, we'll take a look at the record book, uh, just to see our final records. Obviously, it's going to be all guys on our team, being a brand new franchise. So the all-time leader in points right now for the franchise is Miko Rantanen with 523. Spencer Knight's actually got the season record with 8, which makes sense because Lafreniere left, came back. Spencer Knight, I think the only player from the expansion that stayed the whole time. Sam Reinhardt there in assists, 322. Taylor Hall, games played, 574. That's kind of nuts, but I guess that kind of makes sense. Even though Hall did retire, Spencer Knight's a goalie, so he won't have as many games played. Lafreniere was gone a couple seasons. Knight there, shutouts 26, wins 260. I mean, yeah, that's pretty good. Ranching in goals 242. Take a look at the season record. So you got Corey Perry there, games played. Forgot he was even on our team. Shutouts in a season, Spencer Knight had five. Perry there, 121 penalty minutes. 57 goals, 106 points for Rantanen. Sam Reinhardt assists, he had 71 year. Knight had 34 wins. I believe he had more wins than that. The wins for the season record, I think, is actually bugged in this game. Rookie record, Stan Coven assists, Dostal shutouts, goals was Dreber 33, points was also Dreber there at 64. And then game record, saves, Spencer Knight had 52 one year. Sam Ryder had five assists. Rantanen had a seven point game with four goals. And I think the last thing we look at here, guys, is the NHL record. So Ovechkin actually had most games played. 1839 passing Patty Marlowe. Flurry there, the second most games played for goalies behind Bro Dewar. Ovechkin, of course, the goals. Matthews, though, is fifth, still playing. Points there, you got Ovi at two, Crosby at four. So Ovi just played forever, basically. Crosby's number four in assists. Flurry number two in wins. Shoutouts there, nobody knew. 50 goal seasons. Ovi's tied with Mike Bossy. Matthews on the way with seven. 100 point season. McDavid at 12, still going. He could pass Wayne Gretzky. And I think that's it. So. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you guys so much uh, for the ride that this series was. Uh, I already mentioned it, but next one will be the Minnesota Wild. It's been a long time coming. Very excited to do that. I might try and get a roster done beforehand. Depends how much work that's going to be, but uh, stay tuned for all the other videos coming either way. If you guys did enjoy this one, leave that thumbs up. As I mentioned, lost a bunch of subscribers. So if you guys could double check and make sure you're subscribed, I really appreciate that. As always, guys, thank you so much for the support on this series. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.